Well, friends, as we enter into our worship today, I, I, I want to remind you that uh, this is the Sunday before Thanksgiving. And, 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 and I know for so many in America, this is, a, this is going to be a very different Thanksgiving from any Thanksgiving that you've ever celebrated before. Uh, many of you have, have in the past gathered with uh, uh, 15, 20, 30, 50, 60 family members and had a huge meal and had a massive gathering. I know that for some of you, it's just going to be your, your immediate family. You may be with your, your parents, um, but there are so few people, I think, going to be traveling in and out of, 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 of states to be able to, to be together. So it's a very, very different season. But even as different as it is, I, I, I want to challenge you. I know there's a weight that you're carrying right now because you're thinking about this very different Thanksgiving and you're thinking about what you're missing this year. But as we worship together today, I want you to think about the places, the people, and the things for which you are thankful. Uh, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, I want you to write that in the comments below as we go, as we go through this today. And when you, when you see someone posting something for which they're thankful, join with them in that thanks. Uh, you can say it in the midst of worship when you see it posted, thanks be to God, or you can write a comment uh, below to engage that person and, and celebrate along with them. Uh, we are so blessed in so many ways. Uh, at, at the heart of our faith as Christians is this wonderful thing that we call grace. And grace is a free gift that comes from God. And I think it's interesting that grace is intrinsically linked with the word gratitude. Gratitude and grace go hand in hand. When you receive a free gift, you're filled with gratitude. I don't think it's by accident that, um, that the, the Spanish word for thank you is gracias. The, the Italian word for thank you is what? It's, it's grazie. And even the French word, I know it's not grace, but it's very closely linked, isn't it? What do they say in France? They say merci. So even as this is a different Thanksgiving, I want you to pause today in the midst of this worship and look all around you and say thank you for the blessings that are yours, for the grace. I want you to express gratitude. Now let me invite you to join with me in our call to worship this morning. When we are lonely and feeling lost, Jesus calls us and brings us hope and peace. When we are angry and frustrated, Jesus heals our wounds and soothes our tempers. When we are sorrowful and broken, Jesus binds up our wounds with His healing love. Come, let us worship the one who cares so abundantly for us. Amen. Let's worship God together.
I don't know about you, but it seems to me that people are getting shorter with each other. Now, I don't mean that they're shrinking. Uh, what I mean is that they've got a shorter fuse. Uh, around here in Jersey, people just naturally seem to have a shorter fuse anyway. But with COVID, with the, the pre-election vitriol, with the, the election itself, with the post-election confusion, with everything having opened back up to everything getting ready for lockdown again, there seems to be this sense that people are kind of on edge. They're just a little bit off today. There's a lot of unease in people's hearts and in people's minds, I think, about the, the holidays coming up. People have been anticipating spending time with their children from out of state or with their parents, and then in the last few weeks felt it was the best thing for them to do to cancel, to keep everyone safe, particularly if they're meeting people from out of state. But now they're, now they're very much feeling the, the loss of this important time that they usually spend together. I think loss is the right word because there have been so many losses that people have experienced this year. Now, I've mentioned those losses before, but I think now as we get into the holiday season, many people, many of you, are feeling the sting of those losses much more sharply. I can't help but think that for many people right now, with everything that's happening or, or not happening, it feels like we're in a, in a new place, a place that's very different, a strange land, if you will, where things that used to make sense no longer make sense, and things that make sense to us now would never have made sense to our former selves from seven, eight, nine months ago. We have become a strange people living in a strange land, and, and, and so many of us are, are struggling with that reality. We desperately want things to be just like they were. And for some of you, you're living as if nothing has changed in a frantic attempt to make things feel like they used to feel. Some of you are living with the same assumptions that you've always had, not realizing that many of those assumptions, they don't work anymore. They don't hold true anymore. We're living in a very different paradigm a strange world, a new world, not necessarily a brave new world, but a new world nonetheless. It strikes me as I put these words together, as I put these thoughts into words that were, that were coming up in the next few days to this holiday in the U.S. that we call Thanksgiving, where we look back to the story of a group of brave souls who left a country where they were being oppressed for their religious beliefs. And they came to the new world, a place they'd never been before, a place that was utterly foreign to them, where they carried forward many of their assumptions from their previous life. In a world where uh, they, 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 in a world that they had, that, that, that was the only world that they had ever known. But when they came into this new world, they found that many of, of those ways that they were bringing with them were no longer valid where they had to relearn many skills, where they had to learn some new skills for the very first time, where they faced, now often not favorably, people very, very different from them, whom they ended up oppressing in a far worse way than the oppression that they had been experiencing themselves, in a new land where they faced hardships, that they were encountering for the very first time, facing insects and diseases that were utterly unknown to them. They had no knowledge about the types of food that they could eat, and the way the story is often told, it was the indigenous people who knew the country, who had become familiar throughout the generations with the land, who had all the skills needed for living in this reality. It was those people from whom they learned how to live how to survive, how to thrive even. But they began as strangers in a strange land, and they had to embrace wholeheartedly their new reality. I mentioned this the last time, but this is the same story, isn't it, that we find in Scripture. 
Again and again, we find the people of God in places that are unfamiliar, that are strange, uh, places that were filled with danger. We find the man and the woman cast out of the garden where everything was provided for them to a place where they had to develop new skills to live off the land. We find a family in, in, a, in a boat uh, drifting for what must have seemed like an eternity far from the land and far from everything that they had ever known. We find Abraham sent from his father's house, a place of safety, a place of security, to a land that was known only to God, a place utterly unknown to him, and a journey that lasted for years before he eventually arrived in that place. We find Joseph as a young man cast into a pit, sold as a slave and living apart from his family for decades, far from home, in exile with, with strange people, with even stranger gods. We find Moses driven from the life that he had known as a prince of Egypt, to live for many years in exile as a shepherd, to be sent back and to lead God's people in their seemingly endless wanderings in the wilderness. And then we find the people of God having settled in their land for many, many years, having made that land their home for many generations, being taken away and held captive for even more generations, enslaved, uh, subjugated, made even less than human by the Assyrians, by the Babylonians, suffering and struggling in these strange lands. It was in these strange lands that we find psalms like, like Psalm 137, made famous in the 1970s by Boney M, by the rivers of Babylon, where we sat down. There we wept as we remembered Zion, strangers in a strange land. Now, the Scripture that we're about to hear came as the Word of God to the people of God while they were, while they were lost while they were strangers in those strange lands. They had lost their homes. They'd been taken away into exile. They were longing to be back to the way that things used to be, and they had lost hope entirely. It was a time for them of utter darkness. And this is the word that was spoken to them. The scripture for this week is from Jeremiah 29, verses 10 through 14. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy Thanksgiving. So one of the most often quoted scripture passages, uh, scripture verses comes from this particular passage. It's Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. It's a verse that's often given to high school and college graduates along with their personalized copy of all the places you'll go. My mom actually gave me a plaque with this verse in it when I was at university. The verse says this, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, plans to give you a future and a hope. Now, Folks who see this verse quoted, especially, right, if someone quotes it on, on, or posts it on Facebook, you'll always find you've got the obligatory commenter that says, you've taken that verse entirely out of context. It's just a thing, it seems, with this particular verse, whenever it's referenced. But I'm going to tell you something right now. If there ever was a context, other than its original context, when this verse was applicable, it's right now. It's right now. Now, we're not in the same context, absolutely we're not, as the people of ancient Israel. But 
there's a kind of parallel in a sense. They were in a strange place. They were in a place they didn't want to be. They were living a life that they didn't want to live. They were, they were far from everything and everyone that they had ever known. Many of their loved ones were dying. Now, granted, uh, many of their loved ones were actually being put to death, but they were losing the people that they loved. And it was into the midst of that situation that this particular word came, and it came from the Lord Himself. I am here for you. I'm here with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'll be with you always, even in the situation of exile where you're far from everyone and everything you've ever known. And for us, even in the situation of quarantine, of social distancing, of mask wearing, of learning how to relate to each other in new ways, of connecting more online than on person, I promise, says the Lord, that I am with you, and I will never let you go. Wherever we are, no matter how unfamiliar the landscape, God has promised always to be with us, and that in all that happens, God is working for our good. His goal for us in this life is to become like His Son, and in the next is to be with Him forever. And all that we face, all that we endure, and all that we enjoy, God uses to mold us into the likeness of Christ. That's His promise. I wonder, even in this strange new land that we find ourselves in, can you trust Him? Can you trust Him to be faithful to His promises? If you knew Him to be faithful in the past, can you trust Him now to be faithful? I'm going to challenge you to actually take that statement one step further and hopefully help to move you beyond trusting in God's promises to actually trusting in God Himself. I'm going to finish by quoting from a book called The, the Christian's Secret of the, the Happy Life by Hannah Pearsall Smith. And in this quote, she, she points us beyond our own understanding of the promises of God. To God Himself. And, and, and I do conclude with these words. She writes this, the prayer which is answered today may seem to be unanswered tomorrow. The promises once so gloriously fulfilled may cease to be a reality to us. The spiritual blessing which was at one time such a joy may be utterly lost, and nothing of all we trusted to and rested on may be left to us. But the hungry and longing memory of it all. But when all else is gone, God is still left. Nothing changes Him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in Him is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And the soul that finds its joy in Him alone can suffer no wavering. It's grand to trust in the promises, but it's grander still to trust in the promiser. The promises may be misunderstood or, or misapplied, and at the moment when we're leaning all our weight upon them, they may seem utterly to fail us. But no one ever trusted the promiser and was confounded. The God who is behind His promises and is infinitely greater than His promises can never fail us in any emergency, and the soul that is stayed on Him cannot know anything but perfect peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hi Pluckerman, it's Alyssa from IHN. I am so honored that I was asked to do the reading this week and I am just really happy that I can connect with you all through this unique way. Um, I want to extend my most sincere thank you to all of you, to your congregation, for being such loyal and committed supporters for our families, especially during these times. When the stay-at-home order was issued, it certainly was ironic because some of our families didn't have physical space to follow those orders, um, but the outpouring of support for our agency has been truly humbling, to say the least. I have been with IHN for about over 10 years now, and I can honestly say that there are never two days that are the same. But the one thing that I can count on every single day is the goodness in people. And when we say that we shelter and feed families 365 days a year, that means that someone shows up every single day. And that has never failed, and that's all because of you. Even if we haven't had this experience personally, homelessness and living paycheck to paycheck is layered in many human tragedies that we can find a connection to based on our own life experiences. And that's what makes this agency inspiring to be a part of because we're all different, but at the end of the day, we're all human. So thank you for all practicing your faith in action and by supporting a mission that is really a hidden reality in Somerset County. As we enter into our time of prayer, there are a few, uh, a few things I just want to bring to your attention. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you uh, to all of you uh, for, for continuing to give so faithfully. We're nearing the end of the year and your giving has been phenomenal this, this year. Uh, I, I, as we approach the end of the year, I want to remind you uh, that many of you have made pledges and if, if you are able, we'd love you to complete those pledges uh, before, uh, before the year ends. Uh, also, uh, just a few weeks ago, we, we sent out and we have online, and we'll make sure there's a link in the description, uh, our, uh, our, uh, our pledge cards uh, to, so that we can begin to prepare for 2021. If you've not made a pledge yet for 2021, please go to the website. Again, follow the link that's down below, and that will take you uh, to uh, a, a way that you can pledge online. You can also continue to give faithfully online as well on our website and in the link down below you'll find it, um, I, 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 our Give Now page. Uh, you can give to the, a regular giving or there's some other opportunities for giving as well if you wanted to give in a very particular way to a particular area of ministry. So take a look at that. Um, also, as we enter into this season, one of the things that I'm, that, uh, that, 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 that's so very, very obvious is people are having a hard time. Um, and we do have a we do have a, a prayer page 
on the website. You can click on that page and if, if you're struggling and you're, you're in need of prayer, uh, you can write that down uh, on, the, on the prayer. You can also write your prayer requests in the comments below. I mean, everyone can do that. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, those requests will go right there. We can, re we can remember you. If you need any specific, um, more um, practical, hands-on help, you can be in touch directly with me. You can uh, DM me uh, through, through Facebook. Um, you can shoot me an email. I, there's all kinds of ways to, to, to find me and to reach out to me. I'm, I, I'm not hiding. Uh, you can certainly get up with me. And, but if you have a need, whether you are physically a part of our church community or you're connecting with us I, I, online, I, I, you, this may be even your first time watching us. We're here for you, okay? I, so please reach out to us and we'll be glad to work with you. Uh, and, and in Christ's name, uh, help you meet whatever needs you may have. A couple of events to bring to your attention. Uh, on November 29th, uh, online, we're having our Advent workshop. Look out for that. That will be posted through our website. Uh, we'll also have the videos up on, on YouTube. So uh, we, we, we had 74 kids register for that, looking for the, for the craft kits. Um, th the information that you need to complete some of those crafts, we're going to make sure that's available to you uh, so that you can watch along with the videos and you can make the crafts. We're also going to have a live a, a Zoom party, as it were. I'll be hosting that on the 29th. Um, we'll get that information out to those of you who would like to be at that. You will need to pre-register for that. We're not simply going to put the, the information out there on Facebook, but if you'd like to be part of that, let me know and we'll make that happen. We'll make sure you have an invite to, to that. That's on November 29th. Uh, on December 5th at 5 p.m., we're having our annual uh, tree lighting. That's going to take place in the back parking lot. Everyone's going to be in their cars. We're going to have music from Somerset Hills Harmony. Uh, the Carlons, I, I believe, have recorded or are recording some music for us. Um, we're going to have a light show. We're going to light the Christmas tree. Uh, we may have some cookies. Um, you'll be able to be in your cars. Uh, all the music, everything is going to be broadcast directly to your car radio. We're going to have a wonderful time. So if you're looking for just a fun event, uh, just to get you out of the house, to be doing something a wee bit different in a very safe environment, please join us for that. Um, I, I, it's something I'm looking forward to, and I know that there are others, and I hope now you are looking forward to that as well. Um, many of you should have uh, received an email from Right Now Media. Uh, we've entered into a relationship with uh, this organization. Uh, they basically have a website that's, that's uh, it's Netflix for Bible studies. Uh, they have literally thousands, they've got in excess of 20,000 different videos um, covering all sorts of topics related to scripture, uh, 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 the Christian faith and the Christian life. Um, it's a free gift for everyone who's connected with this church. There's a, there's a link on Facebook. I'll make sure that's close to the top of the Facebook page as well uh, so that you can, you can benefit from that. Uh, with that, we're going to be hosting uh, a couple of uh, small group studies uh, during, uh, during Advent. The first one will actually begin next Sunday evening. I'm going to put an invite to some of those groups uh, uh, on Facebook and in the e-blast this week, so you can you can uh, take the opportunity and sign up for one of those small groups. They're all going to be doing the same thing, uh, so so look out for that. It's all going to be online. Look out for that, and you can jump into that to that to that study. So I want to invite you now to 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 quiet your heart and still your minds as we continue in the worship of God in our prayers. Let's pray together. Let us pray. Father, you teach us whenever we feel overwhelmed by the chaos and difficulty of life, we can turn to you in prayer for peace and serenity. But our human solution in this time of uncertainty, fear, and separation from what we term normal is to handle it ourselves. Turning to you, Lord, should be our first response, not our last resort. So here I am, Lord, thanksgivings around the corner, and naming what I'm grateful for should just flow from my lips easily. Yet I'm struggling, I'm mourning the empty seats that'll be around my dinner table, the traditions of Thanksgiving holiday lost. Oh, I know I shouldn't. The empty seats around my table aren't due to illness or death. 
Rather, they're empty so we can keep each other safe. Lord, how can I feel so ungrateful yet be grateful at the same time? I think I know why. It's my humanity, my sin. I'm fearful and anxious. And I try to handle it myself when I should heed Paul's words. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I know this is true because when I am faithful, there's a calm and I can see your hand in things, colors in the sky, the rustle of leaves as the season changes, laughter from some children running around our church, searching for clues to the scavenger hunt or picking out a pumpkin. Last week, Lord, the doors to our sanctuary were open and your good news spilled out onto the street. It was heard by some people walking by and they came to the threshold of the open door to hear your word. I couldn't help but feel your presence in that moment. All around me, Lord, I see your work. We're caring for each other, reaching beyond our walls and sharing your message. Heavenly Father, be present to your people who suffer and allow them to feel your healing touch. Protect and lift up our first responders as they see worsening caseloads due to COVID. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for hearing my prayer. A weight's been lifted. Why did I carry it so long? Let us trust in you as we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So friends, enter into the rest of your day, wherever you may be, knowing that the Lord is with you. 
knowing his peace and knowing that he is faithful to his promises. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain in your hearts forever. Amen. Thank you.